Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Brian Weber, and it's been a while since I've talked to you guys on YouTube here and my personal channel. Hope you're all doing wonderful. I've been super busy trading my personal account and my Top Step Trader Pro account, as well as building my trading education company, Price Level Trading. And I uh, hope you guys are doing wonderful. And I'm, in this video, I'm actually gonna talk about the small account challenge where it's at, because I actually went back and revisited it after I got funded again with the $50,000 account with Top Step Trader. I was in the Pro account, and I don't know if you've noticed, but if you're a trader and you've been trading these markets, there's a lot of opportunity, but there's also a lot of volatility. And in the Top Step Trader accounts, there's not much risk. Uh, it's, it's not, in a nutshell, I'd say it's not a really good idea to trade those accounts when there's such big moves happening, unless you can get a really good entry. But only having a thousand dollar risk per day is kind of tough in this market. But when you're using the minis, at least in my in my personal account, I can go down to the micros, uh, which you cannot do that with a pro account with Top Step Trader, which I was a little disappointed at. I couldn't go ahead and trade the micros in in the Top Step Trader account, which doesn't make any sense to me because why can't you do that? That's probably something they should add in into the uh, the regular combines, even though they're kind of splitting up the minis and the micros separately. But it would be amazing if they offered that, the micros to be available to uh, the bigger funded accounts so that you can actually reduce your position size and trade these markets that have a lot of opportunity so you can have wider stops. But that's the primary reason, primary reason why I went to started trading my individual account with AMP. And right now I only have, I start each week with about $2,500 in the account. I think the last time I talked to you guys, I was using around that, around $3,000, but I decided to cut it down to 2,500. And I started back doing this in beginning of February of this year, so about a month and a half ago. And the account so far has made about $5,700. So more than 100% gain I would say so far actually it's about 200% a little bit more than that but I just want to go ahead and tell you guys like my strategy my plan kind of like how I am approaching the situation to keep consistently paying myself so each week at the end of the week I'll withdraw the profits and it's usually anywhere between like 800 to 1500 dollars and take that out reset the account back to 2500 dollars for the following week uh, because it's kind of like a mini trading combine in itself um, with more relaxed, uh, I would say, risk parameters. Uh, so I'm a little bit more aggressive, and the top step trader rules don't necessarily go well. They don't. I don't really agree with them with my personality because I'm a little bit more of a risk taker uh, in these markets, and I like to have wider stops. And I'm allowed more opportunities with my personal account, especially with because it allows me to uh, to size down so I can take more trades or at least prevent myself from getting stopped out from having a tight stop. Uh, this is the, the ATR on the NQ on like the five minute, I've seen that like over 100 points in one five minute candle on the NQ and you just cannot trade that with like a, th uh, a, t like a 50 point stop is like you're already hitting your, your stop loss limit for a top step trader. But let's take a look at where the account is at right now. I'll just cover some of the statistics in the account for through Sierra chart. We can look at that data, and then I'll more or less go into more details on uh, mainly what I, what I, how I'm trading the account, just to give you guys kind of an idea of how I'm approaching it. But just so you know, it's going to be a lot different than, say, someone else, someone else that's trading the size account. Um, just letting you guys know that I'm an aggressive trader, and you might not be able to get the same results, or you might get better results. But this is just me, and I'm sharing you sharing with you guys the results so far um, and going forward I expect to make you know at least a thousand dollars a week uh, eventually scale up and probably make double that or more and uh, let's let's jump in and let's uh, review some of the statistics on the account so far all right guys so I just want to quickly talk about uh, some of the trading strategies that I use it primarily just focused around NQ I know though it looks like there's a lot on this chart but there's really not much going on. Um, if you know what you're looking at, um, the primarily thing that I, things that I use for technical analysis, uh, besides just paying attention to price action, 
and market structure, just observing, like, you know, when you get screen time over the years, you just kind of have like a rhythm. You kind of just have a sense of what price is going to do um, around certain time frames, what depends on what the news of the market that day is, and so on and so forth. But primarily, I use trend lines. I have horizontal support and resistance, uh, opening range highs and lows. I have a midpoint here. Here's the opening range high. The green line here and then the red line is opening range low. Um, I have studies that I developed that show um, critical support levels and resistance levels that are usually dashed like uh, like this color blue one right here. Uh, it's based on volume and momentum and then uh, based on the opening range high and low I also have targets to the upside um, if we do have an opening range breakout. Um, you can kind of see here, that's where we hit, uh, this is Friday, the latest day. This is where we hit Friday afternoon um, into the close. Uh, right from the opening range low, off this trend line, all the way up to the top of the channel. So I just look to take trades um, around that area, say buy this trend line, um, go long above midpoints, go long above when the price is above and moving averages unless I have support that we're t about to bounce off of potentially. And um, find the moving averages is a pretty good idea as well. Um, I'll show you an example. If I just zoom in over here, uh, you can, this is a nice buy here, obviously, because we're coming back retesting the market top set to 72.47. It's sliced a little bit below the nine and the 20 EMA on the five minute. Didn't quite hit the 50 though. But here's another buy at 50 you could have done. So uh, little little stuff like that. Uh, I try to keep it super simple, you know. I don't want to overcomplicate trading. I don't use order flow. I do look at volume though. Down here, and I have it split up between buyers and sellers. I do use the John Carter squeeze with some RSI. That RSI has uh, some moving averages in there, in order so I can kind of gauge the strength of the move. The momentum so to speak um here is the squeeze right here is the yellow dots every time i see that we're in the squeeze so more or less there's no trade but you can obviously trade when we're inside the squeeze and when it fires out look at the type of move that you could potentially catch so and, and fibs are one of my one of my favorite things to use so just in conjunction with all those that I just mentioned, I formulate trading decisions based on that. So let's take a look at this here charts. Come back into here. So the account is actually at yeah 3,800 right now. Uh, that starts at 2,500 at the beginning of the week. So I just submitted my withdrawal request to get bring it back to. $2,500 for this Monday, this upcoming week. But here is the data since February, uh, since I started trading the account again. So it's up about $5,712. Um, you can see that primarily I just trade long because it, even in this bear market, so to speak, and all these down moves, there's still plenty of long opportunities. Uh, it just seems to be my bias and I feel more comfortable going long. Uh, although uh, it's probably something I need to work on, but it's definitely my edge and my strength because I'm good at recognizing long setups. Um, but this only one short trade that I took was an accident because I had an extra <laughs> extra contract at my profit target on the long and I got filled and I immediately flattened for a $32 loss. <laughs> but um, you can see like my account is kind of, kind of whipsaws a little bit because of the volatility. Um, I don't typically trade with tight stops or I would say hard stops most of the time in this volatility. That's why I used to tend to trade with micros and the one time I traded with minis, I had this drawdown and luckily uh, I was down about negative, about that much, negative 2,225 and I fought back all the way back with one and two minis to actually make money that day. Uh, I think that was like two weeks ago. And those are the types of things I try to avoid um, through using this global profit loss management. Try to, I try my best to keep the max loss at $1,000 to flatten me and lock me out of my account for the day. 
but as you know, it, it can be very difficult to, to stick to those rules, but I do my best to do that. Um, but that's why I just kind of accept the risk and I accept that this is more of an aggressive approach to trading because it's a smaller account and just my personality. If you ever seen John Rambo or John Moulton, uh, I feel like I, I resemble his trading style and how he's, he, he mentioned uh, as a trader, you just have to have big brass balls, you know, and not be afraid of losing. And that's kind of how I approach to it. If I lose the money, I know I'm going to make it back. So don't sweat it. But I like to give myself room uh, to give myself a chance, you know, even if price goes against me a little bit. Not the ideal way to trade, but um, it works. Works for some people. So yeah, that's. I think the profitability is only 68%. So it's nothing crazy. So at 68% making money, uh, this is between the micros and the minis. Typically, I start out with, I'll trade the minis overnight because it's a little bit slower, easier to deal with. But uh, then I switch to the micros. If I'm up overnight, I'll switch to the micros. Unless I'm super confident in trade, I'll take it with a mini. But I typically would trade the micros, especially at open, the US open when there's a lot of volatility, a lot of whipsaw. In case price goes against me and I don't typically lose as much as I will with a mini. So I'm able to rebound a lot easier. Um, I think the longest winning held trade I had was over an hour. That was one of my most proud accomplishments so far. Uh, longest, so it was three times longer than the longest losing trade. So working on that patience, working on, although I do tend to scout more, like 10, 20, 30 points at a time on the, in this volatility, Definitely trying to work on holding a runner to get those 100 point plus moves, but I'm not going to complain making 10, 20, 30, 40 points on NQ, especially if it's on a mini, you know, and I have had one day where I made $800 in one trade and I just immediately turned off my, turned down, shut the everything down pretty much, closed the broker, closed the air charge, closed the toss, and I was done. I think I went surfing. It was in the first 30 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, this is... Pretty much the results so far. I'll uh, show you really quick the March so far. I got a bunch of dogs next that live next door to us. Just moved into this new place. It's very pet friendly. I'm stoked because I have a puppy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so far the first two weeks of March up about $3,000. Um, I expect more or less it be, to be the same, at least another thousand each week, closing the month of March out. But that We'll see how it goes, and I'm sure I'll update you guys in the next few weeks. Uh, if you guys at all are interested in learning how to trade and want to join a trading room or want to just learn exactly how to trade futures with more or less my style of like my strategy, obviously your risk parameters are going to be different. You're going to be more strict or more loose. It's just everyone's different. But we at price level trading, we Kristen and I definitely are able to nail down some serious, serious levels. I would say that have high probability of turning a, a nice profit. Um, and you can see that I'm only 68% on a win rate, and sometimes I've been a lot more than that. But 68%, so it's like two out of every two out of three trades I take, I win on. Um, or look at it this way: every one out of three trades I take, I lose. So if you can handle that and deal with it, then you'll be fine. And we actually have a futures trading course that we launched about a week ago that I think will help you get you up to speed covering risk management, trading psychology, covering trading strategies, technical analysis mainly, candlestick patterns, chart patterns, some technical indicators that we use, but obviously those aren't, they are, I would say delayed indicators. So they're lagging, but some things we'd like to look at for longer time frames. Um, talk about market structure, which is price action, which is really all you need to know. Um, and then managing your risk and actually some trading strategies with how we actually set up our entries, our stop losses and targets and all that. So let me know if you're interested in that. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe from the coronavirus, stay inside. Wash your hands, keep that good hygiene, and uh, uh, wish nothing but the best for you guys when we all get through this, and I know we will.
but have a wonderful rest of the weekend and I will chat with you guys soon and uh, take care. Bye.